Hey everybody, Haku here with my review for Tawada Midgets No Index 3 Episode 13 and I think from what people, I think somebody said it in the comments last week, uh, this is going to be the last episode before the mid-season break. Uh, so it was basically our mid-season finale and we're going to have a break next week and I'm not sure if we'll have a second week off or not because it seems like most of the uh, most of the shows for next season aren't starting until quite a few days into January. Um, so we'll see what happens. We might actually have two weeks off before the second core, but I'm not sure. Um, it, I, it, it's at least one week though. So uh, no review next week, but we'll be back as soon as episode 14 comes around. As for this episode, I don't think it was as good as last week to me. Uh, well, I don't know. For me, this was kind of like a par for the course episode for the show. It was like straight down the middle, didn't go too crazy, didn't go all out. Um, but at the same time, it certainly wasn't bad. It was definitely still good. Uh, there were a lot of parts towards the beginning that I really, really liked a lot. And a lot of the parts toward the middle or end where I was just kind of like, eh, okay, with them. So uh, let's start talking about it from the beginning, of course. Uh, Toma finds Villian. Same with Amoxa. They show up. We jump away from them. Uh, we see the Night Leader fighting Aqua of the back. And the Night Leader is immune to anything he perceives as a weapon, which is a cool power. The entire fight here... Again, I would like all these things to be more fleshed out, but for what we got, this fight looked really, really good. And I thought it was really, really good, but especially the animation, the production quality, it just looked amazing. So, uh, um, Aqua wins and then leaves, um, and then we see that Toma left Villian with Amoxa and is carrying on alone uh, to try to find Index. So Carissa shows up using a Cortana original, which has this crazy cutting through fourth dimensions power. Um, Aqua then saves Toma and Index, which was nice. I mean, again, it's one of those things, if this was slower and we didn't just see him be defeated a few episodes ago, it might have been more impactful for him to save Toma. But either way, it was a cool scene. Um, I like the way he was jumping around between the rubble. I thought that was really cool. But uh, he saves Toma and Index, and then he tells Toma about Fiamma and what Fiamma's plans are. Uh, and basically, Fiamma wants Index and also the means of controlling her, which would be Toma. So because of that, he can't let Toma and Index die here, because if he did that, then Fiamma might just sort of cause more chaos. So um, I like that Aqua has his own reasons here. So, Carissa, we don't see her again. We find out that she returned to Buckingham in case Cortana goes out of control. And that's the reason that uh, the fight didn't continue on there. So, Misaka, we cut away and we actually get to see her for a bit. It was a funny little comedic scene where she was stuck in big boob country. Uh, but Toma calls her and gets her to explain how to bypass the security so that they can get into the uh, rail lines beneath Buckingham Palace. So uh, they fight this giant, it was more, it was basically just a golem really. So they fight this golem and uh, Kurtana we see is too much for Carissa to deal with, with the uh, coven compass attacking and everything. So uh, Carissa's struggling to keep it under control. Then we have this weird out of place feast scene um, and Night Leader calls Aqua again. If this was paced out a few episodes and we're like, oh, Night Leader's giving him information now, it would have been different, but we just saw him be defeated earlier this episode, so it feels like Night Leader did a real 180, um, giving Aqua advice about the unblockable attacks that Carissa can use with Cortana original. But either way, uh, at the end we see Elizard, Laura, and Remea going to get a magic item from the museum, and I love the trio of them, so that was good to see. Uh, so yeah, very, very short summary. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I really, really liked the fight at the beginning and Aqua saving Toma and basically everything for the first half of the half of the episode I liked a lot. Uh, for the second half, the subway scene seemed very, very weird. I don't know, just the whole fight and Villian's proclamation and stuff. I felt like we don't really know anything to care about Villian at all. I don't really care about her as a character right now because she's gotten no development at all. Um, and in addition to that, I don't know, Toma calling Misaka and all that, it was nice, it was whatever, but it wasn't really anything too cool or amazing. 
Uh, and then the feast scene just did seem a bit weird and out of place. Uh, so yeah, all of that, really weird. The second half of the episode, not nearly as good as the first half. Uh, but I'm still going to give it a pretty decent score just because I can't give an episode that had that Aqua and Night Leader fight a terrible score because that was a really, really good looking fight. And even though towards the latter half I was like, some of this stuff, like it's... It's where the story is rushing through so much that it's not really developing stuff and that's why it's not as good as it could be and it feels kind of like empty and uh, empty and rushed, I guess. But um, even then, the production quality was really, really good. So it's one of those things where it's the same struggle as every episode where what we're getting to me, to me I'm entertained by it. I think it's good. Uh, but at the same time, like... I've got to say, objectively, quality-wise, it could be much better, and it does feel rushed, and some things feel empty or meaningless. Uh, but still, episode didn't go too crazy, but at the same time, I didn't think it was bad. I'd, even those parts I criticized toward the end, I didn't think any of them were bad, just kind of meh. Um, so yeah, it went from meh at the end to really, really good towards the beginning, so I'd still give it 8.5 uh, Big Poop Countries out of 10. Because like I said, I really, really personally enjoyed the fight and the stuff toward the beginning. Uh, but that's it. I'm keeping this one short, it would seem, uh, because there's not really a ton to talk about with this one. So uh, like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this episode, what you thought of my thoughts on it and all that. Subscribe for more. Uh, Tawada Majutsu no Index 3, much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want, I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And if you want to link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us there about this show or anything else, it's free and open for anyone. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, break next week, and then we're going to be coming back with this, coming back with the second core of Tensei Shitara Slime Dot again, plus all the other anime manga light novel stuff. And we're uh, going to be introducing um, the Promised Neverland anime. I'm gonna, I am so unbelievably hyped for that to get here. And then in addition, other than that, we've got um, the second season of Fuki Gundam Mononoke incoming, which is something that I reviewed way back when the first season aired. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for all that. So uh, that's it. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you all next time.